So after I put out my first video about us moving here, um, from the questions that you gave me, I realised although I'd given you the news that we were moving and showed you that going on, I hadn't actually answered any questions. So I thought I would do this tour to show you around now that we're settled in and answer some questions as we go to break up the tour a little bit. So I thought I'd do a little bit of an updated tour. Now we've been in a week or so, uh, probably just over two weeks and we're a bit more settled. So we'll start in the hall again. Ignore the dog barking if you heard that. So Gary's office we had to get set up pretty quick because obviously he had to do working. Um, so just got our old sideboard from the hall in here at the moment and just his desk and we've got the bookcase that was on our stairs here and just a little bit of stuff that we haven't got space in so we're going to need to sort out some sort of storage thing for in here but it's uh, up and running and it's functioning so that's fine downstairs bathroom again not a lot to show with that but I put my pretty shelves up, so that's cute. Um, yeah, so that's fine. That's the cloakroom cupboard. And then the kitchen is looking a little bit better than when you saw it with all the boxes in. Um, yeah, so my sister came the first weekend, my sister and her family, and she well, they were, they've been so helpful throughout this whole thing. But she was uh, she came and helped me clean and put things away. So, yeah, so this is the door. You come in, you've got worktop along here. So that's um, sort of the cooking area. I think the kitchen is the thing I found the hardest to acclimatise to because it's such a different layout than I'm used to. So we have just got a little bit of rubbish in this corner where we're sorting out a few little jobs. This is uh, going to be some shelving and I've got a few little bits stacked on there and I haven't filled holes yet either. So uh, there's just a little back door here um, going out to the garden. So this is the island and there's a little area over there which I haven't particularly sorted out but at least it's neat. I'll also show you a bit of the garden. So this is out of the kitchen doors. Uh, so we'll go round to the left first. So this is the kitchen in here. And round, that's the dining room and the wind, uh, living room. So we've got this little small area of patio here and then these trees to the left so that's the kitchen again there so we've got this lawn area here a few shrubs and things in this corner and a little seat gravel area here she's in a strange shape as if something used to sit on here don't know what that would have been and then as we turn round you can see like the other side of the garden so that's back to the kitchen doors again there and then down the side of the house We've also got over this side so there's all woodland behind here, which is quite nice. And there's a little stream down here as well. Which it's not, there we go. And then going back into the garden. So there's a little gate to that stream but there's not really much riverbank or anything so you couldn't really go out there but 
I guess it's nice to look through and hear the stream. And then this sort of big monolith here, I think is some sort of water feature. I think water comes out the top here and sort of bubbles down. And then there's a little, well, they call it the summer house. Um, but they were using it as a shed, which is what we've done as well. Just put a few garden bits in there. Can't really see because the windows are all steamed up, but there's... <laughs> there's like shelving down the side there. So it looks like it would make a really lovely potting shed. Um, so I don't think the... It was quite damp when I went in there, so I don't think it's uh, properly waterproofed. Um, yeah, so I don't think you'd actually want to use it as a summer house, not at the moment anyway. But yeah, so that's the garden area. Going along there. And I think there was decking here, which the previous owners have removed to expose this sort of rounded patio, which they preferred which is quite pretty, but it's quite a small area in terms of putting a table and chairs out or anything. So, yeah, might need to make some changes to that to make a nice sort of seating area. But yeah, that's the view in the garden. And then as you come around here, we're starting to get into the houses behind on that side. And then the French doors out to the garden, that's the main doors out. That's the only door we've been using, we haven't used the other stable door on the other side. And then worktops, sink, background, there's the utility room. We haven't got anything in there apart from the dog bed still. But this is sort of vaguely presentable in here, well, you know, for a utility room. Uh, washing machines all plumbed in. We do need to get a tumble dryer for the top because ours was one that vents to the outside, but this is on an internal wall. So we need to get a condensing one. So let me see what questions I got. So why did you move? Um, space is the principal reason. So um, yeah, we really liked where we used to live. Um, we liked the area, we liked the house, um, but yeah, we were just getting really tight on space. I think because we had the garden room that I used as my craft room, that kept us going there for a long time, but um, just eventually we were just sort of bursting at the seams everywhere else in the house and, you know, there was no garage and things like that, so outside storage was also really difficult. So yeah, that's probably the number one reason why we moved. Um, and then the next question was, where did you move? And are we near to Millie at uni? No, we're not any nearer to Millie. We actually haven't moved very far. Um, we were looking around this kind of area where we lived before, um, sort of between where our families lived and where we live now. Um, and as it happens, we found one really very close to where we used to live. It's literally half a mile away. Um, so yeah, so we're very close to where we used to live. Um, so we know the local area is sort of, it's all the same. So that was all fine. So that was an attractive thing about this house. Um, but yeah, it does mean we're not any closer to Millie, which is a bit of a shame. But um, yeah, it's just where we happened to find the house that uh, we liked. <laughs> How did Bertie get on with the move? Um, yeah, really surprisingly well, actually. I wasn't sure how he would take it. Um, so he went to stay with my sister um, just for the day of the move, well, a couple of days, because um, obviously we didn't want to have to worry about him running out while we had doors opening, getting furniture in and out the house and so on. So uh, yeah, so he was out of the way while we moved. Um, and then they brought him back over once we were in. And uh, yeah, it was quite funny because he obviously didn't know where he was. And even though he saw me when he came back, it just took a moment for it to register. Oh, you're here in this strange house. So then he was, you know, very excited to see us all. And then once we were all 
you know, he realised, oh, okay, everyone's standing around here, this is obviously where we're going to be. He just started sniffing around everywhere and running into all the different rooms, looking in all the corners, you know, having a good old nose around. And, uh, and once he'd sort of done that, he just went and sat in the dining room. That was his kind of vantage point. He could sort of see where everyone was and what they were moving around doing from there. And yeah, he's just been absolutely fine since. He's just sort of gone, oh, well, you're here. That's all right then. And he just goes and curls up in his bed like he ever did. So he's enjoying the garden. He's enjoyed looking around the garden and sniffing all that and everywhere. And I've taken him upstairs as well, because he'll come and sit up in the craft room with me when I'm up there. Um, but yeah, he did the same up there, just running around, sniffing everywhere. But once you sort of, you're in a room and he sees you're going to stay there for a minute, he's like, okay, I'll just settle here with you, that's fine. So yeah, yeah it's been no problem on that front, he's been uh, absolutely fine, so that's good. So back into the hall. Into the dining room, this was our main dumping ground for boxes, but I've managed to get it quite clear for now. A few bits tucked down the side there, and whoops, wobble do. And this bit isn't really sorted out yet, that's sort of a dumping ground that I've kind of prettied up a bit just for the meantime. And I did have a load of boxes stacked down here, but I've mostly cleared that. I've got a few little bits behind there, my old uh, sewing machine. And this is my stack of uh, curtains from the old house, which I brought across just in case we needed them on temporary basis. But actually the other people left all the curtains and blinds here. So that's really been quite useful. We've just been using those so I can repurpose that material for other things now. Um, so we did get this new quite quickly because I had a little change plans in my craft room. I was planning to use my craft board sideboard down here. Um, but in the end it did fit into the craft room so we got a new little sideboard to match this one down there and then again this was my another mass dumping ground that I have cleared so I was perhaps thinking a nice plant pot or something could go in there so that's the doors to the living room if you remember and this has got these nice double doors out into the hall and then if we go into the living room we'll see Bertie who's going to say hello to us apparently um yeah so it's quite sparse in here in terms of furniture ah look I've hidden a few things around here these are the last things that I haven't actually got unpacked yet a few pictures and things and our old bathroom cabinet there which doesn't really have a home at the moment. Um, yeah, so I've set it up so it looks at least tidy for a, a living room. As I say, it's, as I said before, the room itself is quite a bit bigger than we had at the old house, so we haven't really got enough furniture to fill it properly yet. <laughs> but, you know, it's tidy, it's workable, got the old crochet out, so... All the important things have been taken care of so that's through to the dining room again and they have french doors out into the garden here which is quite nice more holes i haven't filled and that there was a chair there on the previous tour which has now been repurposed elsewhere so it's a little bit even more open and sparse than it was before Okay, time for a couple more questions. So I have here, was it daunting to pack up your home after 20 plus years? Um, yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, so as I said in the other videos, we've lived there for an awful long time. Um, so yeah, you'd kind of, you kind of bed into a place in that amount of time. So yeah, and we had, like I say, we had a lot of stuff, which was part of the reason why you know, we felt like we were running out of space everywhere. So, yeah, it felt like there was an awful lot of stuff. Um, we did do it in stages because we initially found this place in the summer of last year. Sort of, it came to autumn kind of time and we thought, well, it, you know, it won't be long now. So we did start packing up some of the longer term stuff. 
and um, you know made some sort of preparations with the garden and things and the pots and things like that in the garden and some of the loft things and I started going through everything I went through everything we own sort of you know decluttering trying to streamline and clear stuff down um, so we sort of did quite a lot of that in preparation but even then when we came to the actual move it just you know I'd start a room well, we'd start a room and you know, you go merrily along going, oh, you know, two boxes, three boxes, this is all going fine. And you just, you know, and then a little while after that, you'd be like, there's just so much stuff. I feel like we've barely made a dent in it. Every time I open the cupboard, it feels like a million more things just spring out with it. And just felt like stuff was expanding, you know, <laughs> almost you get it out of the cupboard and be like, how is this one shelf filling like three boxes? It's, what is this stuff? doing it's like growing on us so then I'd normally get to a stage where I felt quite overwhelmed and like it was never all going to be done but then you just sort of kept going and kept going and then finally like okay I think maybe maybe there's light at the end of the tunnel and it sort of went like that with every bit of the house really so yeah so it was quite overwhelming at times quite stressful at times but uh, yeah we got there in the end, we managed. <laughs> uh, well, the next question is kind of related because it's, was the mood move stressful? So mostly no, actually. Um, like I say, we were quite lucky in that we really liked where we used to live and we still really liked it, even though we had reasons why we wanted to move and we had been thinking about moving for a long, long time. Um, we actually mo nearly moved quite a few years ago and we looked around and um, we found a place actually and it sort of it went so far down the line and then it ended up falling through and so we kind of lost heart a bit at that stage and kind of put it on the back burner for a long while but it, it never kind of entirely went away so anyway when we came to move this time we're like well look uh, we keep talking about it we keep half looking and half not let's try again we'll you know, we'll go through the process and see where we go. But the nice thing is that we we like where we live. We're not unhappy with where we live. So we'll go through the process. And if we find somewhere, you know, if we sell ours, great. If we find somewhere we like, great. And if it all works out, fantastic. But if it doesn't and we, you know, it ends up falling through or we don't find anywhere and we end up staying here for another few years, well, that's fine because, you know, we've done more years than we thought here and you know there's still plenty about it that I really love so so from that point of view there was no there was no pressure so we didn't have any of that sort of stress of, sort of oh we must find somewhere or we need to do it by a certain time or you know so we didn't need to feel any pressure in that way so that was quite nice and um, the only bit what that was stressful was the whole packing it up like I say we'd done quite a lot of preparation um, beforehand which did help a bit but the actual just that last sort of two weeks basically sort of once we knew the move move was happening because it was sort of in the balance for so long it kind of everything came together and then there were just weeks and weeks where we are waiting for these last couple of bits to fall into place and we're just like is it is it actually going to happen so of course you can't pack everything up until you know you're definitely moving so like well I don't want to pack it up and then you know it drags on for another three months so we had to leave it until we knew sort of quite firmly you know so that we could progress things further but then once we did know we're like okay now we're moving we've got two weeks that's your deadline get everything in boxes let's get going that bit was quite stressful so um yeah that wasn't great fun so I was packing everything doing mad amounts of cleaning and trying to get everything ship shape but, um, and I got toothache as well, of all the times, I got absolutely raging toothache when I was trying to pack, I was like, I haven't got time for the dentist, I've got stuff to do, but of course I had to make time. Um, so yes, but then once everything was packed, once we were ready to go, the actual moving day itself, went, again, was actually amazingly smooth, you couldn't have, well, you know, you wouldn't have predicted it really, because normally these things have a few wobbles, but yeah, it went fine, we got... My brother-in-law actually moved us, but he had the whole thing orchestrated. It was absolutely amazing. He did a brilliant job. 
Um, he got his dad in to help who had worked in removals previously so he was really good at sort of you know knowing the best way to pack things or you know good ideas about how to lift things or what order to do things. So yeah they got it all packed away in the van. In the morning we came across and then getting it out again the, once we were here was just so quick you know I think it took us we started quite early in the morning took us till about nearly one to get out of the old place but then it seemed like it only took us a couple of hours to get in here it was just you know we had another couple of people come help by then and just everyone was ferrying boxes and I had everything labeled up with the room so it was just everyone took things to the rooms and then furniture I was going right that's there that there that there so yeah and <laughs> we were sort of in before we knew where we were so yeah so it was a little bit stressful but we were very lucky that we didn't have that sort of the normal pressures of moving which took a lot of the sort of pain and worry out of it so we were very lucky in that respect so next question and uh, the next question is actually about the craft room so i think i'll answer those when we get to that part of the tour but now we're in and we're settled we can start to make plans about what we want to change and how we want to do things so a little understairs cupboard there. It's quite good for storage in this house. There's an understairs cupboard. There's a little cloakroomy cupboard there. And then there's another understairs storage for the that larger size. And this smaller one does this smaller area. So that's quite good. So let's go upstairs now. Bit of scuffed wall that all needs repainting, which looks a hundred times worse on camera than it does in real life. So this tall window that a few of you spotted and liked, it's quite nice. So this is my other area of plonking things that I haven't found homes for yet, mostly pictures and things. And some hooks, a hook collection that I've uh, got going on so this is the bathroom again i don't think a lot's changed in here there was actually a box in here we had boxes everywhere so the box has gone but that's mostly just tidying airing cupboard again so then coming round to the main bedroom um all nice and tidied up now um, I've moved my shelving, hello, I did lose my, I had my shelving unit there. I've actually managed to pop that in here. So I reduced the hanging space down a bit because there was loads and I didn't need that much. And I put my shelves in there because in this side, there's a whole load more hanging space in there. So that's plenty of that. Um... And then the ensuite, again, just sort of tidied and cleaned everywhere. So much cleaning, cleaned in here. And look, this cute little plant pot thing I got. That looks sweet. So on from here. So back out onto the landing and you see my other little dumping ground. But it's not too bad. To be fair, we've got all, rid of all the boxes now so far. That's just my sewing machine box that needs to go up in the loft. And I haven't got homes for these. Again, these are just little storage boxes, but I'll keep those until Millie comes home and see if she needs them. Uh, a few little memory boxes that I haven't found a home for. A Christmas basket that inexplicably got left out and just the laundry. And so the next room along from the main room there is this, this is the smallest room, the little uh, spare room we're using it as, and sort of Gary's dressing room at the moment because there's an extra wardrobe there with space in. And uh, we've got some extra doors in here just to store some bits and bobs. His records and record player, because we don't know quite where that's going to live for now. But yeah, it's handy to have an extra bed available for just, uh, if anyone wants to stay, but also uh, just as a little bolt hole. Like if you can't sleep at night or if one of us is ill or something, it's just so nice to have sort of somewhere else where you can go so you're not disturbing the other person. So it's kind of handy for that. But yeah, it's mainly being a little 
extra storage space and dressing room at the moment. Then Millie's room, not a lot has changed in here, apart from we've tidied the boxes away slightly to the side. Um, and we've got my old wardrobe in here, which I was going to use in the craft room, but actually Millie might have that now. So she has her own wardrobe, but she likes the idea of having this one, uh, just because of the way the storage is laid out slightly differently. So there's all her boxes that we do need to unpack, but we're pretty much leaving that until she comes back because we're not quite sure how... She wants to sort of see the room and decide how she wants it laid out, so there's no point unpacking all of her boxes into the shelves and drawers and things and then having to sort of take it all out so we can move things around. And, she, you know, she just wants to be involved in that side of it as well. So we just got her mattress. She needs a new bed as well, so that's another thing we'll have to sort out. Um, but yeah, just her drawers there. So it's all quite spartan in here as well at the moment. But And then finally, last but by no means least, the craft room. So if you saw part two, it was mostly about putting this craft room together. Um, so you will have seen most of this. But I've got some extra walls down there, got my shelves all sorted, everything's nice and tidy now. And again, so the first weekend, me and my sisters kind of, and uh, her daughter, we kind of tackled the kitchen and got all that clean and sorted. And then the next weekend they came around and we had a real blitz in here and they helped me get all this unboxed and sorted out. So that was a massive help because it was quite a huge task getting all of this out. And my brother-in-law kindly put this pegboard up. We went to Ikea, so I thought, yes, Ikea peg pegboard. I'm going to have one of those. <laughs> so he put that up for me. So that was kind of cool. And then round this side, I've got the shelves. My lovely Cherry Heart fairy lights there on the right. And yeah, and uh, that's where the living room chair has come up to here. It was in the dining room in our old house. So I thought it would work in the living room here. So I've brought it up here just to trial how a sort of little armchair would fit in this space, which seems to work quite nicely. And actually that one doesn't look bad there. So it might, that might one, that, can't talk now. That chair might stay there or perhaps we'll get another one. This one will come back down to the living room. I'm not sure yet. Here's all the lovely shelves. So we'll finish up our questions in the craft room. And so what have we got here? So will I miss my old craft room in the garden? Um, yes, yes I will. Um, I think more so in spring than any other time because in summer it could get too hot. So, you know, on those warm days, I couldn't really be up there anyway. But on those sort of, especially those first days of spring, when it first got nice again, I could fling open the doors. That was really lovely. And just the light and airiness of it. And so, yeah, there was lots I really liked about my old craft room. Um, so, yeah, there's elements I shall miss of that. And there's elements I'll miss, uh, well, there's lots of elements I'll miss of our old house, you know, our old fireplace and the built-in cupboards in our living rooms and just all sorts of little nooks and crannies and nice little areas that, you know, that I really enjoyed about being there. But, yeah, you know, it's a mixed bag, isn't it? We loved that house where we used to live. Hopefully, you know, this house will be just as special in time. So, yes, in conclusion, yes, I will miss it. Um... And then the next one is, well, it's kind of connected. So I've got questions about the craft, this craft room size. Is it the same or is it bigger and smaller? And just is this new house bigger? So yes, this new house is bigger than our old house. The old house was a three bed semi, semi detached house. Um, and this is a four bed detached house. So we've got an extra bedroom here. Um, and then we've got uh, a little office downstairs as well which is kind of extra space that we didn't have and also um, we've got a double garage here we didn't have a garage before at all we just had a shed so 
that feels like a massive luxury. I know you don't buy a house just for the garage, but we're like, oh my God, look at all the space we've got in the garage. It's so exciting. <laughs> we can actually fit things in here and see what there is. It's uh, yeah, that's a bit of a revelation for us. Um, yes, so yeah, it just gives us a bit more space to spread out. And the living room is also um, a bigger room. So it does just give us a bit more space because we both work, work from home. Um, my husband's always done a little bit of working from home. It started off as just a day and it's kind of expanded and it, you know, it has changed over the years as he's changed different, uh, doing different roles and things. But at the moment he does work at home quite a lot. Obviously with COVID he was working at home all the time and uh, he's not working at home all the time now. But um, yeah, he, he's kind of based at home and he goes out from here rather than being based somewhere else and does a bit of working at home kind of thing. So yeah, and then, and obviously I do all my cherry heart shenanigans from home as well. And I have all this, all this stash and things that I've collected up around it that all need storing. So yeah, we kind of just needed um, that space. So yes, the house overall is bigger. The craft room itself, I'm not sure if this is bigger than the space I have. I would have say it's about comparable. It's slightly different because there's a little, if you've seen part two where I sort of show the craft room a bit more, you can see there's kind of like a, I'm not sure if alcove is quite the word, but it's, it's kind of like an L-shaped room. I mean, most of the room is a big square and there's kind of like a little extra space kind of around the corner from the door. So it's definitely wider than my craft room in the garden. Um, and I would say it's as long, you know, including the bit around the door. It's as long, probably equally as long. So equally as long one way and then it's wider on the bit where it goes out more that way. So, I mean, I've got all the things that I had in my old craft room in here. I've added a chair in. But then I had a fridge in my old craft room. I used to have a chair in my old outdoor craft room until we needed an outside fridge. And then I had to sacrifice the chair to get the fridge in. So I would say it's roughly like for like. This might this might be even be a smidge bigger because I have got, um, I'll put a picture in, but I've got my uh, sewing, what's the word? Sewing mannequin in here as well now. So yeah, maybe maybe the way I've got it laid out in the minute, it does feel like it is a smidge bigger, but I think they're roughly the same. So I think that might be all the questions I've got for now. Um, yeah, so I hope that tells you everything you want to know. And um, thanks very much for watching, for uh, you know having a look around my house with me. I always like looking around other people's houses. So. <laughs> It's just interesting to see what other people do, see if they've got any ideas, you know, that I might want to incorporate. So yeah, um, but thanks for watching and I'll see you on the podcast soon. Okay, bye.